Good morning. Hey, welcome back to the hangar everybody and we are back for some more fun and festivities. Well, I don't know how much fun it'll be considering we're trying to track down an electrical problem. This gets to be fun in a hurry and by fun I mean this gets to be a real pain in the butt sometimes trying to pin down what's going on with this jet or really any electrical panel or system. Uh, I get to deal with that quite a bit at work sometimes having to troubleshoot systems and uh, sometimes the symptoms that present themselves don't necessarily lead you to the right component that you need to be looking at. Uh, let me show you what we found in the book there. All right, so here is the external power transformer rectifier. That is that piece that we replaced the other week. That definitely went bad on us. Uh, following the DC uh, part, that's pin three right here, comes up and ends up over here at the warning light control uh, the warning light controller but it gets blocked by that diode so it doesn't go that direction at all but that's important I'll come back to that and then it ends up moving on it comes back to the external power plug which normally would connect down here it leaves the jet on pin F and then gets jumpered in the plug for this thing which that guy right there there's a jumper inside there And then it comes back on pin E. And this is why it's called our E pin voltage. Now, it seems a little, uh, thinking about it, why does it do this? Well, there's a reason for that. We come up underneath here and look at the plug and the socket connections. So you got four big pins in these two little ones. These two little ones is pin E and F. And you notice they're a lot smaller and they're also a lot shorter. If this plug is not fully seated, those are the two pins that will break connection first and that'll release the ground power um, contactor and it'll, uh, it helps protect the jet from anything weird with a loose connection, especially on power plugs. So that connection will break first, release the contactor and help help keep anything bad from happening with the AC electrical system. All right, after that, it comes back in, and for us, on our particular jet, it comes to the generator control switch panel. That's where we set external power, and that 28 volts ends up in the AC power control box, in this guy, which is in the bottom of that cockpit like you guys saw before. All right, now, Part of this troubleshooting procedure and following the steps in here, some of the some of the troubleshooting steps didn't quite make sense. So uh, the sequence was, if there's no ground power to the jet and you had that 28 volts on uh, a specific pin on this connector and you still weren't getting external power, that means something in here, usually one of the contactors, went bad. But... We have, we can keep external power on a jet, so that means that contactor works like it's supposed to. So that procedure didn't quite pan out for us. However, this is, this is why you don't ever want to really rush into things. And going through the schematic, this little box right here, warning light controller, assumes load of external power transformer rectifier, that little guy that we replaced, immediately after external electrical power is applied to the aircraft. That is a big thing. That means that the right 28 volt DC bus takes over for the electrical power transformer rectifier as soon as we put the two switches in external power. And also says here, that this particular breaker, uh, 49CB303, that is on panel three in the aft cockpit, has to be, it can't be popped out. And I checked that breaker, it's not popped out. So this right hand 28 volt DC isn't, isn't coming through for us, possibly. Now, if that breaker is popped or this right 28 volt DC isn't working properly, that means right here, 
To prevent possible overload of 3T414, that ground power transformer rectifier, or it'll blow the fuse. Both of which have been happening. So the fuses have been blowing and we have overloaded this transformer power rectifier and that is the one that burnt out the other week that uh, you saw us replace. So that wasn't in the troubleshooting steps. So this box is very revealing for us. Now we're gonna track down this right hand 28 volts and see what's going on. All right, so back here in the Wizzles cockpit right behind me, and uh, I'll show that on screen, is the two uh, 100 amp transformer rectifiers. Uh, the one on top is the, is the one for the right hand uh, DC bus, and the, the one on the bottom is the left hand DC bus. Uh, it's the right hand one that powers the, um, it's the right hand one that powers um, a lot of the essential bus, including taking over for the external power transformer rectifier after external power is switched on. For some reason, uh, we're not getting the 28 volts. So either we have a bad transformer rectifier or there's a relay that went bad uh, behind door 19, which is outside the jet. Uh, so that's something we're gonna look into. A lot of today was just pouring through the schematics and uh, tracing down things one by one, eliminating uh, different sources of uh, potential issues and learning more about what's coming from where, where is it going and what powers what. So I'm pretty confident in that it's not the battery. <laughs> and it's not the ground power transformer rectifier that is doing its job however it is getting overloaded and keeps popping its fuse so there's a reason for that and so it's either a bad tr not not providing power to the right hand bus uh the the bus tie current limiter which should allow the left hand to power the right hand that may be open and if that's open the left hand can't power the right hand um, so there, that's a built-in safety for um, for the jet that if you had a transformer rectifier fail in flight, that uh, assuming nothing was bad on that on that side that caused the short, the um, the either either main transformer rectifier could power the other bus uh, left hand or right hand. Uh, just depends on uh, which way it went. Now. Uh, if there was an overcurrent, that bus tie current limiter could have popped, and that's kind of easy to get to. I, if I could get the, if I could stick the camera down in there to where it is, I'd be able to show it a lot better. And currently, I can't. But it's it's down where the battery is, and it's mounted above it, behind it, towards me, and against the uh, the cockpit bulkheads. So it's it's buried underneath there. I can I can see it or I can reach it, but I can't do both. So I'm gonna likely pull that out at some point and test it and make sure that that isn't open. But like I said, a lot of today was just looking at schematics and trying to pin down where our troubles may be being caused by. So it's really all I got for today, guys. Like I said, kind of a boring day, but. Uh, important because uh, like I said earlier a big piece of troubleshooting is not only finding out what it is but also what it isn't so with that thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time